Well, welcome again to our devotional time, and today we're in Numbers chapter 13. The parallel passage is in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 22 through 40. This is one of the reasons why it's so hard to do a consecutive Bible reading, uh, because there is so much duplication between uh, particularly the books of the Old Testament and uh, how they overlap one another. In any case, we're Numbers 13 or Deuteronomy 1, 22 through 40. And if I were to preach a message on this section of scripture, I would say, what do you see? Uh, here's this case. Uh, as we look at verses 1 through 3, the Lord speaks to Moses. Now, just think about that for a minute. What a privilege that the Lord would speak to us. You say, well, he doesn't speak to me. Well, he does to me. Uh, maybe not in an audible voice, but a lot louder than that very often. And he speaks to me in many ways through his scriptures, through circumstances, uh, through the spiritual input, just sensing what he's saying to me. In any case, the Lord spoke to Moses. And uh, he asked Moses to send out men to spy out the land. Now remember, I've brought to your attention back when we were studying Exodus, how many times the Lord told the people of Israel and Moses that the land, the promised land, was going to be occupied by the Jebusites, the Hittites, and all of the other rites, uh, and that he would take care of that. But in any case, he sent out uh, men, men that could be trusted, in verses 4 through 15, we find that they were named. Now, that's a little unusual uh, in the fact that very often uh, we would see that they just were sent out. Uh, in the New Testament, many times we saw the 70 were sent, but it doesn't list who the 70 were. But I think it's particularly interesting here that the 12 that were sent out were named, name by name. The second thing that I want you to see is in verses 17 through 20, Moses' directions to the men that were sent out. He wanted a report back, and he wanted the report back to be very comprehensive. He said, I want to know what the land is like. I want to know about the people, whether they're strong, whether they're few or many. I, I want to know what their cities are like. Are they fortified? What, what kind of vegetation is there? And this is the time of the grapes. Uh, how do the grapes look? Well, in verses 21 through 24, they went out, and, and they actually, in verse 23, cut a cluster of grapes to bring back with them. Now, I don't know how big these grapes were, and uh, I don't know how good they were to eat, but I do know that the cluster of grapes was so great that they had to put them on a pole and carry them with two men. And we see that they were in the land for 40 days. This is not a quick trip. This is 40 days of investigations and covering a lot of area. And the report back was quite interesting. They said, surely the land flows with milk and honey. And we brought this fruit back so you could see how good it is. But verses 28 and 29 turns negative. Nevertheless, the people are strong, they have large fortified cities, and their descendants are like Anak, or giants, or like Goliath. Uh, and we see that Caleb brings back a different kind of report. Verse 30, Caleb says, let's take it. <laughs> we will overcome. I like Caleb's attitude. And so you ask me of the title, what do you see? Well, when 10 out of 12 saw it, they saw fortified cities, giants, and lots of problems. When Caleb saw it, he said, let's take it. We will overcome. In verse 31, it says, the other men said, we're not able they're too strong and gave a bad report because they said the land devours its inhabitants. Now, remember, they were there for 40 days. It didn't devour them, did it? <laughs> well, sometimes it's what we see. 
they saw men that looked like giants to them and thought that they would be like grasshoppers in their very presence. What do you see when you see God's direction for your life? Do you see giants in the land? Do you see fortified cities? Or are you like Caleb and says, yeah, that's God's plan. Let's do it. I think that's a challenge for every one of us today. Can we look at God's plan and say, let's do it? Or do we look at the land and we see the giants and we see the fortified cities and all of the problems? I'm convinced that when Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have abundantly, that he really meant it. And when God lays out a plan before us, it may have giants in it. It may have fortified cities in it. But you know, just as he told the Israelites, I'll go before you. I'll clear the path. It may not be easy, but I'm going to accomplish what I said I'm going to accomplish in your life. And that's my thought for the day. Don't forget at the end of the clip, you can get yesterday's lesson, or you can take a look at the three circles and see how to have peace in a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.